Oh yeah, fast pop. What is good? You gotta we got it a little slower. You gotta. Mm. Oh, mm. that looked that like. Was a... Here, let me. Oh, you going for the trifecta? Yeah. All right, all right. What do you got for us? Oh, oh that was a quick one too. Better. Quick on my... the draw. Mine was a <laughs> short shrimp, but always to the left. We got a tripod plus one. Quad pod. We're going full on tabletop. We got four legs. We can support a nice <laughs> table. We got our guy, John Bauer. How you doing, buddy? I'm um, great. Uh, excited to talk with you fellas tonight. Ready to rock and roll. A lot of good topics here. Yeah. Let's go. Let's where, go. Where, where can we find uh, Mr. Bauer and all of his merry men? Yep. Uh, still at the Bauer Club on Twitter, at Dynasty Theory FF for the pod on Twitter and Instagram. And then also follow my guys, Mitch Sorensen at DinoMC on Twitter, Dan Lamagna at FF Coach Dan. And um, we have the the Patreon, the Discord, all that good stuff. So slide into my DMs if you're looking for more information. Mm, that's that's cool. what we did. Both sexual and factual. Um it's a good it's a good discord it's a good uh patreon we we subscribe so uh go ahead and sign up for that they stream every tuesday night at nine o'clock so make sure you catch that um and then if you want more there's always more a five dollar ten or ten dollar holler could get you everything that you need from the bauer club and the dynasty theory bunch over there so we got our squad. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment below. All the good things. We're live streaming every Monday at 930. Come get on board. Let's do it. You can get your questions answered. All that good jazz. But today we got a little um, buy, sell, hold. We got a few other things as well. But we're going to start off with the buy, sell, hold. Um, we're going to talk commanders, wide receivers. Well, that sounds terrible to say. The Washington wide receivers. Um Basically, we got a three-way split here, and it seems like there's got to be at least one odd man out. Um, so we can kind of go through these one by one and see which guy you're buying, selling, holding. Maybe, maybe you're into all of them. Maybe you're just a Wentz believer. I don't know. Um, but let's, let's start with uh, the rookie, Jahan Dotson. Currently wide receiver 15. Um, he's had a 90 and 97% snap share, five targets and five targets in the last two games, three and four receptions. Um, 18 PPR points, 17.9 PPR points, um, number six in deep targets with four, uh, number three in fantasy points per target. So what are we, what are we thinking about Jahan Dotson, the rookie here? He's awesome. <laughs> Just like we said he was going to be. We can go to the Penn State fan first. What do you think? I have been impressed with what I've seen from Dotson so far this Coming year. Coming in not being a huge Dotson yeah, guy. Yeah, I warmed up to him at the end, but... Um, yeah, I mean, he's catching everything well, on the first try, too. So, so, so that's always a, encouraging. Is it a buy, sell, or hold for you for Jahan Dotson? He is a hold for me. All right. I How think about, there'll be a better buy window coming up. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to sell him, I think you probably got some pretty pretty prime time to sell him, but I don't think I'm selling it's right gotta now. has got to be some touchdown regression, right? What, what, what do the numbers say there, JB? <laughs> You stole the words out of my mouth, Jay. <laughs> Come on. Listen, he has seven catches for two weeks, okay? Seven? Three touchdowns. Seven catches. Yeah. Three touchdowns. 43% touchdown rate. On average, when we <gasps> look at receivers, it's, it's about 7.5%. All right? Over the course of the season. So we're sitting here. This dude, like, it, it's not sustainable. It, it all goes back to Carson Wentz, who is having a career start to the season at 8% touchdown rate, yeah. 8%. His career average is 4.7%. So overall, I love what I've seen out of Jahan Dotson, first round wide receiver. Uh, you know, I didn't have him in the, the top six receivers. There were a lot of talented receivers. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of talented receivers this year, um, but, but he's come out super hot. I am certainly looking to navigate through my leagues, through my portfolio, and see where it makes sense to shop him. So if I have to put a label, buy, sell, or hold, I don't mind the hold, but I, I would certainly look to explore options just because I, like 
there, there's a good chance you could probably get an Olave plus right now. And that's something I would be interested in just for, for one example. But yeah, like, like it, it, it's been quite a start there for Mr. Dotson. So I got to just take a, I got to ask a question. Cause it's like, it's such a buzzkill when the analytics come in and be like, he's scoring too many touchdowns, you know, <laughs> like how, how are we going to knock my man for showing that he could score touchdowns? He scores a lot of touchdowns. <laughs> He's very good at it. I said, wow, Listen, how many I, touchdowns this guy scores. And, and I get it. And we, we talk about it often. You know, Adam Thielen, he's the poster guy for every year regression. Aaron Jones, from a running back perspective, he's going to regress back to the mean there. But these guys are also old. They, 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 they are. But I'm, I'm just saying there are guys that do tend to stay above that league average that I mentioned. Is Jahan Dotson going to be one of those? You're betting on Carson Wentz if that's the case. And I'm not ready to make that bet. Good point. Yeah, so so dynasty for sure for me is a hold. Redraft, if, if you had a, in a redraft, are you trying to move this as well? Oh, man, redraft. What is that word? I yeah. Know. Goodness. <laughs> tough tough um, to really who, put Who too makes much trades time. in redraft? Too much. Uh, no, one of my leagues. In, yeah. a, in a dynasty setting, you can put kind of numerical round values on things and make it a little, easy, a little easier to understand. Redraft's always pretty tough because it's, it's so team to team what you might be able to move. But, like, would that be somebody that you'd be trying to sell? Because that was a late round pick um, in, re, in redraft. So probably trying to maybe see if you could find something if you're sell, kind of interested in selling in dynasty as well. Yeah. And then from a redraft perspective, I think there are guys that you could explore. And I, I just don't believe that anything close to that touchdown rate sure. is going to be sustainable. Yeah. Um, no, I, you know, I, and, I, and we hate knocking people for, oh, they score too many touchdowns because it sounds so silly. It does. Oh, I'd, I'd rather somebody that doesn't score a touchdown. No, we right. Want, we want like the touchdowns. Lobby. You're but just... in your yeah yeah right who gets 300 <laughs> some air yards and can't find the end zone but i would explore if you're in a redraft league you're in a home league you're with your friends and family i would explore an opportunity to to move Jahan dotson for a player that might you know oftentimes you talk to people in your redraft leagues and they're looking at points scored and that is all they care about mm-hmm. maybe you could explore something for I, I don't know. I'm pulling a Debo Samuel or a Chris Godwin plus in that case, if you believe Chris Godwin comes back here soon, because obviously a, it's that's redraft. A, that's we, a Penn State on Penn State crime there. I, th- there you go. There you go. Um, but yeah, I, I think there are opportunities, both whether it's redraft or dynasty. So I would definitely be holding Jahan Dotson. I ended up with a lot of Jahan Dotson in dynasty. Um, he was just kind of the odd man out, pretty much always going in the second round and uh, mm-hmm. two one to two four uh, for the most part, and and somebody that I f- I find myself with a with a decent in my stockpile of Dotson, and I don't think I'm too anxious to move him. I really like the player. I I didn't have him ranked in the top six, but I definitely had him above Christian Watson's of the world uh, ranked as well as James Cook's um, and Olave and Olave. Um, so. I'm holding Jahan Dotson. No, of course, what's going on right now isn't sustainable, but it's a nice way to kick off a rookie campaign. And whether whether it's not whether it's Carson Wentz or not moving forward, Carson will probably run his course in in Washington, and, and they'll probably end up doing uh, something else at quarterback. I, you know, but and this is it, it comes down to kind of what's your style of play in dynasty i'm i'm a holder so if i take a guy that i like the talent and all of a sudden he's showing me he can basically translate his game from college to pros i'm like fucking that's what i wanted that's why i took him but if you're the guy that likes to say hey i got this guy as a early to mid second round pick and i might be able to flip him for something better and that play in that stock market type game i get that too um well, like I said, I'm a holder, so my man who's showing that he can pluck balls just like the well, best hands in the class. She's confirming that, and <laughs> shit looks awesome out there, and it's Carson fucking Wentz throwing it to him, and that's short term. My man's young as shit. Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm at 8% uh, rostership of Dotson, and the big issue for me was leading up into – rookie drafts i had my top eight and we did the the mock drafts i'm sure i mentioned that at least 50 times probably to you guys you're like all right jamie we get it we get it but uh i had my top eight and i was doing anything i could to get up into that that tier so because of that 
my overall exposure to Jahan Dotson was limited just because I didn't have a lot of picks in that range. Right. And I wasn't taking him as a top eight pick. But I say that I'd be looking to shop him. I haven't moved any of my shares yet. Yeah. So, so Jay, you're saying you would hold him? I would. I, this is one situation we're going to see eye to eye here. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. Bl- I'm, I'm not going to blame you one bit for holding him. All right. right. So, so a lot of holding for Jahan Dotson. Um, let's go to Curtis Samuel. We'll work our way up here. Curtis Samuel, wide receiver, eight currently, um, seventy-one point four percent and eighty-seven percent snap share for him in the first two games. Eleven targets, nine targets. He's got some rushing in there as well 19 and 22 ppr points 15 uh receptions that's good for uh number five i believe in the league currently um what's your thoughts on curtis samuel moving forward because this this to me seems like a good that, that that you 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 bought into free in the startup or if you've had him on the team for a while or maybe even waiver wired him this year um before the season started or whatever um this seems like the sell of the group um what do you what do you think to, is, is that me yeah to me yeah i'll sorry i should address jb yeah, what do you five think? of us yes. in here too. yes i <laughs> uh, you know i i completely agree uh and I, I hate to say a player is injury prone but if you want to put that label on a guy Maybe it is Curtis Samuel. I find it hard to believe that he's going to be able to stay healthy with that type of usage throughout the entire season. He already was dinged up during the off season. That was a concern. Um, and, you know, we, we weren't exactly sure how he was going to be utilized, especially with the additional weapons coming in. We already talked about Jahan Dotson. But if I, I'm either going to ride this production into the ground as long as it lasts, or I'll, I'll happily take a 23 second call it a day um is somebody going to offer that most likely not but then i'll even package it up uh curtis samuel a third maybe for a 23 second in 12 team super flex leagues if it's a league where you have to at least start three wide receivers and then somebody's sitting there with a godwin uh Keenan. michael Pittman was already dinged up keenan now and there's so many guys that are getting dinged up here so Maybe that's an opportunity, but I, where Dotson was probably, if I'm saying between a, a buy, sell, and hold, he was more towards the hold, but obviously it on the sell, the sell, sell the, side. Right, yeah. But for Curtis Samuel, I would say closer towards the sell than the hold. Saddle, uh, saddle, saddle, saddle. <laughs> I, I know. Uh, I, I need to get my clippers out because I'm hedging a lot tonight. No, apparently. no. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm but, agreeing. I, I should have said sell, but I don't know if the quote would have no, made it. But that was a liar, liar, where he's trying to get out of this, the, this, the courtroom setting. It's just settle. <laughs> saddle, saddle, like sell. It's kind of a double-edged yeah, yeah, sword. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not buying any additional shares. I was going to say, it's kind of a double-edged sword because, you know, you are you got him probably for so cheap that do you ride him, do you sell him? I think that also comes down to a little bit of play style. But is there any, I guess, scenario where maybe, let's say, Curtis Samuel comes out and doesn't have a great game next game and a half, game two games, and but you could see that there's what's been going on here is pretty good and that it you know if he stays healthy there's no scenario where you'd be buying curtis samuel no nah, i just hope that the other people have recency bias and forget how injury prone this man is because i guess he did have one season right. where he made it all the way through and was a thousand yard receiver for the panthers and the next year boom right back out again and then now two games in just played this song and dance too many times, which we did it with Keenan, and he was injury prone, and then all of a sudden he put up like four or five straight years of 16 games played. But he's not Keenan Allen, I don't think, and he's not getting any younger. If you could, if you could get something in terms of a 23 second, I'm with you, JB. We, we just we just bought him week after week one in an FFPC, which are short benches. It's only 20 players, um, and. Um, bought him after week one. Bought and, him like off you the have waiver to start, wire? Or? Yeah, we bought him off the waiver wire. You you have to start three wide receivers. Um, so in that scenario, and we're, we we won the championship last year in, in, in that league, and we're, we've, we're right back. And we, we won the championship without Waller and CMC. Uh, oh, this is in the tripod? Both injured. The triflex? In that, in that league, and we still won. Um, 
in that case, I would go with the first thing you said. I'm probably riding him into the dirt and just seeing if we can't get ourselves into the playoffs because then anything can happen with the production that we're getting from a ball wide receiver. It probably makes more sense to sell for the two, uh, though. Matt, why don't you bring us home on – Curtis Samuel here. What do you think? Buy Wildly sale. easy sell for me. Okay. And the two, everyone's in agreement that the two would be good market value for Curtis Samuel here if you can get it somehow. It, if you could get it. I, I would be shocked if a lot of people were willing to pay. Maybe if we see one more game yeah. out of them, one strong game. But overall, yeah, if I could get that, I, I, could see a late, I would gladly I could, take I could it. see maybe somebody offering a late second. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to really gauge where you're going to be at in terms yeah, of picks. Yeah, it's too early, right. man. People Unless like your team pretend. is just straight... People sm- think, though, that... I mean, if your team is straight smashing, then, I mean, you yeah. can project a little bit, but, yeah, I, I'm easily selling for any second. We're we're a big fan of the the uh, two three swap or the one two swap. If, that, if, if that's Love the way it. you got it, that, if that feels like it's an easy way to coerce somebody into finalizing that deal you gotta sometimes do that swap so that may be samuel also has the third lowest a dot of any wide receivers right too so that gives me cause for concern that's kind of his game though um but i'm just worried about, yeah. yeah i'm just i mean that is his game but it's significantly lower than that of right McLaurin and dotson so let's let's go into terry here and we'll wrap up the commander's receivers we had a hold we had a sell let's go to the buy <laughs> that's what you're going with so he's oh yeah the highest uh ranked receiver here as far as adp and coming into this would have been terry mclaurin by a long shot here um he's currently the lowest wide receiver wide receiver 31 91.4 percent um 90 90.5 percent snap share in his first two games pretty much 100 uh, percent route participation from Terry McLaurin, uh, four targets and eight targets. The A dots at fifteen point three, so good A dot. Uh, that's not good for number drink. fourteen. How many times has, has that been? Uh, I believe he's tied with with De, De, uh, Jahan Dotson with deep targets at four. So that's number six out of the league here for wide receivers, um, and then thirteen point eight and twelve point two uh, for his fantasy point totals uh, through the first two weeks here. So, like you said, you had a you had a hold with you know. JB saying that holding probably to sell essentially. Um, JB, what what's the uh, what's the verdict on Terry McLaurin here? Your listeners probably at this point think I just shit on every player because every player I talk about, it's either oh they're a sell or I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do that. Terry McLaurin, I am more than happy to go out and buy. Yeah, uh, I, I feel I think like the numbers forget- guys are really buying Terry McLaurin shots right now. People forget how good this dude is, and he is one, we talk about analytics, that if you look at his college production in those rookie drafts, he slipped, and people analytically were like, hey, you know, there's a lot of things that he doesn't check the box on. So, you know, he's one of those outliers that, that we're, you know, we're always talking about as a dynasty community. But overall, I have a tier of about seven receivers, and – between like wide receiver 19 and 26 terry mclaurin is at the top of that tier for me and i i think he's somebody that you could go get at a really reasonable price and a lot of it it's not even necessarily because of him it's because of what we've seen from dotson and curtis samuel but overall i i think as this season progresses we're going to start to see an uptick in in not just, uh, you know, he's on the field, yeah. but it, exactly. It's going to balance itself out. We're going to see more production from Terry McLaurin. And it's somebody that maybe he lacks that really high end ceiling. But if I can get him at the right price to be a wide receiver too on my team, I'm more than happy with that. So Terry McLaurin, uh, I mean, heck, you might even be able to find somebody that is willing to add to McLaurin to get Dotson at this point. Th- I'm sure there are some people. Yeah, that would be hey, wild. Hey, he's hey, if I can, if, he's, yeah. he's he's clearly the third dog all of a sudden. Uh, yeah, yep. no. If I can buy back five years, yeah, give me dots. And I'm not saying it's going to happen often, 
but we all know the rookie hype, and especially when these guys go out and produce right away. I mean, people have Drake Lennon as a top 10 receiver already. Garrett Wilson's top 15 for a lot of people. These guys off of early season production creep up so high. And even though Dynasty is such a long-term game, the short-term outcomes play such a pivotal role in the the values. But Terry like McLaurin, People are yeah. playing redraft. It's wild. The recency bias in I, Dynasty I, blows my fucking mind season after season. Some of the some of the trades you see, and and I we all fall victim to it at one point. It's it's like oh like this team it really is a championship team. If I could just do this, and then like three weeks later you look at your trade history, you're like, I, what was I doing, man? <laughs> you know, I I've had I know I've had those moments personally, but yeah. yeah, Terry McLaurin, I'm going out and I'm still actively trying to acquire and seeing what people uh, maybe they're getting a little frustrated there with the other production on that team. Matt, what do you think? Easy, buy, sell, hold. Easy buy. Easy buy. Easy buy. What, yeah. What's what's making it easy for you? He's the best talent of the three. I believe in his talent the most. I've seen it before with him. I don't have any negatives to say about McLaurin. I mean, it's two Carson weeks. Wentz, that's it. Yeah, exactly. But that's the same negative the other, that the other two have. I mean, they're not. no one else is throwing the ball to it's them. It's fucking positive right now that they got Carson yeah, Wentz. Yeah, I mean, their defense sucks. So they're going to be throwing yep. the ball around a lot. Yeah. What's interesting is, you know, obviously Dotson's on a rookie deal Curtis Samuel I believe has two more deals and they just re up Terry McLaurin so I mean this is a group that potentially could be together for a little while um, and all of a sudden we went from the commanders being like they have no skill positions to like damn this is quite the trio right here and like you like Matt just said and, and JB agreed with the defense which was once what took them to the playoffs two years ago seems like the the weak point of the team and you know you had you're going to have to deal with some Carson Wentz turnovers, but we know there's also some good football inside of Carson Wentz. I mean, hell, look at the Colts right now. It's, you know, every, they literally found every way to blame Carson Wentz for everything, even though they lost to the, they didn't make the playoffs because they couldn't beat the Jags, but they haven't beat the Jags in like seven fucking tries. Um, yep. You know, Ursay over the off season tried to take every shot at Wentz he possibly could, and Matt Ryan comes in there and struggles two weeks, and they're zero and two, and and the Commanders are one and one with, you know, Wentz throwing for well over three hundred yards in both his outings here, out of necessity, um, but still is a tale of two halves this last game. But you know, shit, maybe maybe Wentz found himself a little home, and we can see a little two thousand seven Wentz uh, magic here. They did just lose their center. Um, but yeah, no, I agree with with mostly everybody here. I, I'd be buying Terry McLaurin if the deal was right. I don't think I'm. 2017, 2017 once. Yeah, couldn't yeah. be seven. That's so no, long. 2017. I heard 2007 also, and I was like, <laughs> well, the kid was like seven yeah, years 2017, old. 2017. Sorry, <laughs> MVP once. Um, I would be buying. I'm down to buy Terry. Um, if I have him, I'm holding him. Obviously, um, I, I I would send out some feelers i don't think i'm necessarily going crazy trying to buy him because of you know look i mean if curtis samuel stays healthy and dotson's a young player there it may just be i think it will all kind of balance out but it may be a little frustrating with all three of these guys um week in week out uh, the cream should rise to the top i do think terry mclaurin is a is a very very good receiver definitely the best of this bunch right now we'll see where dotson ends up but um, maybe the not first a, too much. Maybe not a huge a first for Terry McLaurin. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend a 2023 first. And you guys know how stingy I am. Yeah. with my 23 picks, but I I couldn't do it. I, I if would you get the two back. If I thought it was going to be a super early second, maybe. <laughs> I like it would take the perfect. You know, but I'm I'm looking at some trades here that were completed. And Terry McLaurin for a first on nine seventeen. So I think that's kind of the price point maybe we are it's, talking it, about. It should be. I don't know if I'm willing to necessarily pay it, even though it seems it, it, that should be the price. And I know that's the price. And I know he's a good player. I don't know if I'm necessarily willing to pay because I, you know, we don't know if Curtis Samuel will stay healthy. But like I do, I, like I have faith in the other receivers in this in this room. So and and you know and there is, you know. Antonio Gibson there, which is probably only for another season, but B Rob and, and, and McKissick. So then even some more targets get eaten up by some running backs. They Logan Thomas had six or eight targets coming off an ACL late in the season last year. So, you know, are they going to throw for 300 yards every go round and be able to support all three of these guys? No. 
Um, so I'd probably, you know, I'd probably buy Terry McLaurin if he was cheap enough. Um, and I know that's, again, hedging, like you said there. But, um, Jay Wayne, wrap us up and get us out of the commanders here. Before, before Jay Wayne chimes in, would you sell McLaurin for a 23 first right now? Again, that all, that all depends on how my team is going and where my build is. Uh, but I would prob- probably. And this this kills what I just said, right? You know, hey, I, go out and buy Terry McLaurin. And I, I'm looking at specific trades that I've done over the offseason where I acquired him and I didn't move any of the shares. But yeah, like the 23 first comparison is so tough just because there's such, you know, we have the insulated value and it's such a highly coveted class. But I mean, do you think it, it's possible to do something involving Gabe Davis? You, like if you're moving Gabe Davis, even plus a small piece, I, I, I think, sign me up for that. I think right now you'd be able to get Gabe Davis straight up for Terry McLaurin. Well, uh, other you, way. You, I want to, I want you to, want to get, you want Gabe Terry. Davis. No, we're trying to get Terry. I think you say things opposite of what you mean sometimes. What, what, JB, which way are you going? What way are you saying? He's trying to get Terry. No, I, I, I want to bring Terry in, into Pittsburgh here. I want to, I want to okay. acquire him. That's where he's from. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just, I just randomly named cities. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cleveland, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> um, Gabe Davis, Terry McLaurin. I mean, it seems like the answer should be Terry, but I'm, I'll go fucking Gabe. You're going Gabe? I bet you could do if a team is contending, Michael Thomas, plus even a really small piece for Terry McLaurin. I mean, Jay, you you said it and you hit the nail on the head. It's redraft season for a lot of people. They just want those points. And if we're looking at players that have been putting points up, Michael Thomas is somebody at the age of 29, a quarterback with a broken back. We're not exactly sure how that's going to play out. I think that's a player that uh, that you could possibly explore. Maybe Amari Cooper just coming off of a banger. Yeah. Turn turn Brandon Cooks plus into Terry or something like that. I, I was looking at Cooks. I was looking at Brandon Cooks, Cooks in a two for Terry. I'd do that. Yeah. Uh, Especially if if I'm a contender and that I believe that to be a sec a late second. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I'll just say this. I'm gonna start hating on the 23 class. There's no way they could live up <laughs> to the hype. There's no fucking way they can live up to the hype. And the idea of it is probably better than what it is. So if you want to get your rocks in. You could probably do better than Terry McLaurin. Put your 23 first on the trade block. See what you can get. See if people in that league are in Dynasty Twitter because that's really where this hype is coming from, I believe. Uh, I'm not too mad at the 23 first for Terry McLaurin, I guess. When I was out in Canton, they actually inducted the entire 23 class yeah. the, the Hall of Fame already. It was a great ceremony. Like It was, it was a blast. Touching, touching moving. Uh, Highs and lows, yeah. Who <laughs> feels so good when he jokes? All right. All right. All right. So let's wrap up this segment. Um, be sure to subscribe, like, be, go check out JB and, and, and his group of guys over there at the Dynasty Theory. Um, catch him on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe to that. Uh, you can catch all those guys on Twitter. You can catch him on Twitter at the Bauer Club. Um, and then go ahead and buy, go, go, go copy, do a t shirt from the FF Dynasty from RevelryBrewingCo.com. Um, support the team. Um, and the Patreon's always open a five dollar holler fund Discord, um, and you know get your answer, questions answered, all that kind of jazz. 